Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Oppenberg and this is my first webcam video post. I'm really excited because tomorrow is a really big day for me. Um, today is May 18th, 2014 and tomorrow I'm going to be starting uh, probably the biggest transformation of my life. I'm going to be getting a surgery that's really important to me, a sleeve gastrectomy, which is a type of weight loss surgery. And it's been a huge journey getting to this point, and I know it's going to be a new and exciting and long journey as well after tomorrow. And so I just wanted to document it kind of for me to see how far I've come to get to this point. And then later down the road when I've lost the weight and um, I'm in a better place, I just want to see how far I've come. And this is also for other people too to benefit them. Um, there's a few things that I have gone through that I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who's ever gone through them. And so anybody who might be in the same boat, like, should I get surgery? Should I not? Or, hey, I just got diagnosed with this. Does anybody else have this? I, I want people to know that they're not alone out there. And so if somebody's looking for a friend and just to know, like, hey, you know, I've been through there. I've been there too. So, and just some inspiration and kind of a, a pick me up. Uh, like I said, it's been a long journey for me. And I hope to post more videos in the future, but um, just, uh, you know, documenting this entire experience. So, I'm just going to jump into my life story and we'll go from there. So, when I was 15, I was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome also known as PCOS or Stein-Levenfeld syndrome. The best way to describe it is it's a hormonal and chemical imbalance in women and during their menstrual cycles. I'm sorry to be graphic um, to you guys out there, um, but during their menstrual cycles, um, you get a lot of cysts on your ovaries and it's very, very painful to go through. And in my case, I have a really severe case there's a spectrum for it there's mild and you know to severe like with most um, disorders or diseases there's always a spectrum and so um, with me I get really really sick from my menstrual cycles they're very um, they're irregular as well so I don't get them all the time but when I do it's really really painful and I'm sick from them um, 20 um, out of 31 days out of the month. So it's really incapacitating. And because I've had it since I'm 15, I've kind of learned to deal with it. So I actually just, you know, even if I'm in a lot of pain, I'll go out to a party or I'll go do my, you know, whatever the day calls for kind of thing. And that's one of my stubborn qualities and probably my worst qualities, um, is I'm a really good actress. And so even if I'm in the most severe pain ever, you won't know unless I say something or unless, um, you know me really well. <laughs> so, um, if you look in my eyes and you can see that I'm hiding something, um, but that's because I've had it for so long. Um, so when I was diagnosed with it, my doctors just really didn't know how to treat it because they didn't know a lot about it and it took a while for them to even diagnose it. And once they did, they said, you know, it is genetic, but yet I couldn't find anybody in my family that has it. Um, recently, um, you know, I just turned 25 in January. So um, it's been a 10-year, you know, journey slash battle with this. And my sister, she just turned, um, or she's going to be turning 19. And she just got diagnosed with a, with a mild case of PCOS. But it's so mild that you don't even really know that she has it. It's just she happened to, you know, get some blood tests done and it just happened. Um, and um, she happened to describe some symptoms and she got diagnosed with it. Um, so we're still trying to figure out if anybody else in our family has it. And so far we can't really think of any women that do. Um so like I said, it's a hormonal imbalance. So I'm the type of person who I'm as cool as a cucumber and I'm always happy-go-lucky. But when it 
becomes that time of the month. I get really upset. I get really, really depressed because I'm in so much pain. Um, it's just constant, and it's really, really um, difficult to go through on a constant basis. Um, and I apologize for my dogs barking in the background. I've tried to record this video now five times, so I'm just going to continue with this one. <laughs> um, anyways, so the only way my doctors knew how to treat it was through tons of medications. And um, those medications, you know, were they were constantly changing the dosage or the type of medication I'm on. And I'm so lucky that I'm that 1% that on the side panel of a medication bottle, if it says, you know, these are the side effects or possible side effects, I'm usually the one who suffers from those side effects. So, um, not fun at all. So it was really affecting my weight. It was really affecting, um, you know, just, just everyday life. And, um, but I'm like, okay, you know, I'm just going to continue on doing this, you know, all right, this is something I'll have to deal with and I'll, I'll learn how to deal with it. Since I was in fourth grade, I've had migraines and I've learned to function with those, even though a lot of people think it's impossible. My, my parents and sisters still look at me today. And some of my friends are like, how do you function with a migraine? Like, I don't know. Um, but it's just because I'm so used to it that I just kind of go through life with it, you know. Can't just sit there and and harp on it, unfortunately. So <laughs> I have to move on with life. And so it just happens that I have those. Um, ironically, also, um, when I was 15, um, I had gotten this really weird abdominal pain. I had woken up one day. And I remember this was back in 2004. Um, I had woken up one day in August um, and my whole body was in pain, and but I couldn't move. And it was kind of like I had some weird paralysis and I was really scared. And I'm like, what is going on here? And my dad had to carry me down the stairs to the emergency room and... Um, that was my first time that I could recall I had been to the emergency room for me. And they said, you know, they kept me there for like eight hours or so. And they ran every test they could. And they're like, it's just some virus. You're really exhausted. It just so happened that prior to that incident, my grandmother was in the hospital and she wasn't doing well because she had um, terminal cancer. And it just so happened later that same week that she had passed away. And so they said, you have a virus and you're just really stressed out with your grandmother's health and everything, you know, it'll, it'll go away. And it ended up going away within a week, but it was just really painful. Um, so, you know, so I have this PCOS and now I had to deal with whatever weird virus this was. Um, so that was in 2004. Then, um, a few years later, I got the same abdominal pain. And again, I had to go to the emergency room because it was so severe. It wasn't the flu. It wasn't any of those things. And every time also, I got a really high fever, like of 104. So not just like 101, but like 104. And so um, they're just like, you know, your blood tests are showing there's inflammation somewhere, but we don't know what it is. It's just a virus. You'll be fine. That also went away. Three years ago, back in 2011, so if you see the trend, it's kind of almost every three years I'm getting this, and I don't know why, this um, inflammation. And on top of that, I'm going through the effects of the PCOS, where I gained a lot of weight from all the medications I was on because they give you hormones to regulate your periods as well as to make the pain less severe. Um, but I was in so much pain, I would have to take Vicodin or Norco or a really strong pain medication. That's how much pain I was in. And sometimes even that wouldn't help. So just to give you a little perspective. <laughs> um, anyways, um, so, you know, I was just in so much pain and I'm just like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Back in 2011, um, that was probably the worst bout I had had was I, um, you know, I woke up with the abdominal pain 
had a high fever, wasn't feeling well, how it had like all the symptoms of a flu, you know, nausea, everything, you know, all ends kind of thing. Don't want to get too graphic with you. Um, and they couldn't figure it out. They ended up putting me through an endoscopy and a laparoscopy and a colonoscopy. Um, as well as I had to go to an oncologist, which scared me half to death because, you know, like I said earlier, my grandmother had cancer and my lymph nodes were inflamed and they didn't know why. So they thought you might have lymphoma and that really scared me. And going through a biopsy was one of the most painful procedures I've ever had to go through. And I have a pretty high pain tolerance because I'm always in pain. Um, I have so much more respect for my grandmother for all the biopsies she had to go through and just anybody else who ever has to go through a biopsy. I have so much respect for you because it is so painful. Um, or maybe it was just in the area that I had to get it done that it was just so painful. But anyways, thankfully, those test results had come back negative. They just, they couldn't figure out, but it was really concerning as to why everything was inflamed and my sed rate was up, which usually implies that there's some sort of inflammation. And my, um, my white blood cells were up too. And they also had diagnosed me at this point for all the weird things I had I was seeing 10 different doctors at this time. I'm like, this is gynecological. No, it's something completely different. Um, cause I thought it might've been related to my PCOS or it was endometriosis, but I don't have endometriosis. I just have the PCOS. Um, anyways, um, so they were testing me for Crohn's because I'm an Ashkenazi Jew and, you know, Crohn's is very common in Ashkenazi Jews. Um, they were testing me for celiac disease to see if I had a wheat allergy. I do have a lot of allergies, not food allergies, but, like, to, um, like, a, um, like nickel sulfate and stuff like that. And I have a weird food allergy to cilantro. <laughs> um, anyways, um, they were also testing me for Lyme disease and just, and taste sacs and, and just every odd rare disease you could think of and everything came back negative which I guess was a good thing in a sense but at the same time it's like what is going on so you know I I don't know <laughs> so I was really upset it took a year and a half for those symptoms to go away and it finally did thankfully um, now fast forward to 2014 um, about a month ago in April I woke up, I did not feel well, I had a high fever, 104, as usual, you're kind of seeing a trend here now, um, I, I had really bad abdominal pain, my body hurt, um, I just didn't feel well, I thought maybe it's the flu even though I, I got the flu shot, and um, so I called my doctor and he said, you know, come by, we'll, we'll see what's going on. The pain that I had in my abdomen was around like where my appendix and gallbladder are located. And he said, I think it might be appendicitis, which deep down inside kind of got me excited because I'm like, oh, maybe this will explain all this pain I've been having all the time. But at the same time, I was really confused because I had just gone through all the pre-op um, procedures I had to go through in order to get authorized for the weight loss surgery. So I'm like, that's impossible that it could be my appendix and my gallbladder because they just checked all those things out. Like, how could it be that? But my doctor's like, I don't feel comfortable sending you home. So you should go to the emergency room and you're going to meet, you know, one of your doctors there, um, a surgeon that I had seen prior to when this, um, when this, when these episodes had happened before. And, um, back in 2011, I had gone to 10 different doctors. I had gone to an infectious disease doctor, my gynecologist, my primary doctor, a gastroenterologist, um, a general surgeon. So that's five, uh, um, an oncologist, that's six, um, a neurologist, that's seven. Um, I also went to, um, can't remember the other doctors I went to, but it was 10 doctors and they were never able to figure this out. So I was kind of skeptical going to the hospital and like, they're just going to say it's a virus and send me home. 
Um, so they had ran some tests and my gallbladder and my appendix were fine, but they still saw inflammation and they weren't sure why. And they're like, we don't feel comfortable sending you home. We're going to keep you overnight for observation. And that was really scary to me because I've never been admitted to the hospital before. Even when I had my laparoscopy, it was an outpatient procedure. So I've never stayed in a hospital overnight for myself. Um, and I had woken up the next day. And like I said, I've always had really bad migraines. Um, I had a migraine at this point that I lasted three days. And I knew that something was wrong because that's weird that I had such a long-lasting migraine. Um, I had also woken up the next day and I had extreme vertigo, which I have never had in my life. And I was so dizzy. And... On top of that, my whole left side was numb, and it also felt like there was this huge weight on my left side, and I didn't know what was going on, so my primary doctor called in a neurologist, and literally, um, I had been through every single test known to mankind from head to toe, MRIs, CT scans, ultrasounds, um, tons of blood tests, uh, I even had to have, um, an EKG done. I had to have an ultrasound of my of my arteries and my heart done because they just didn't know what was wrong. My blood pressure was really high. Um, my sed rate was up. My white blood cells were up, you know, just like all it had been before, except the new symptom was the vertigo. Thankfully, my fever had gone away, so that was one thing. The neurologist is just like, you're getting migraine-induced vertigo. We don't know why, but here's some medication to get rid of the migraine. The migraine went away, thankfully, but still I was having vertigo, and I was still in a lot of pain in my abdomen, and I was on tons of medications, really heavy-duty medications. Um, what was supposed to be overnight in the hospital turned into six days. Um, thankfully, throughout this whole thing, I had really supportive parents and sister and um, some really amazing friends who came to visit me, as well as I got to bond with a lot of the nurses, too, and the doctors. Um, you know, I tried not to focus on how much pain I was in. I tried to get my mind off of it by talking to people I was surrounded by. Um, I felt really sick um, probably day four with the vertigo. I was walking around with my IV stand with my mom and sister, and I felt really sick because I was trying to get out of bed as much as possible, no matter how sick I felt. And I knew it didn't make sense, but all of a sudden I, I turned to my mom and I'm like, Mom, the, the hallway is turning sideways and I feel like there's a step that I need to go up. And I'm really tired and I don't know what's going on. So we went back to my room and I got so dizzy and so sick that I, I just kind of passed out on my bed and I couldn't. I wasn't even fully onto it. My mom had to literally get my legs up on my on my bed because um, I couldn't do it. I couldn't physically do it. And I found out that that was just a really bad case of vertigo that I had. Um, so, you know, I was also getting frustrated because I'm like, when is this surgery going to happen? Um, also, you know, by day four, I had had six doctors come in. I had my gynecologist come in because I thought maybe this is gynecological. It's not. Um, I had the gastroenterologist come in that I had been to before, the neurologist, you know, the general surgeon, my doctor, and then an infectious disease doctor who I'd seen before as well. And then he said that, you know, let's test you for these really weird things. We're going to figure this out. And you know, I wanted to have faith in them and believe them. And I knew I had a really great team of doctors, like VIP care. Um, but they had made that promise to me before and they were never able to figure it out. And I just didn't want to be told again, well, you just have some virus. We can't figure it out. Um, so they're like, we're going to test you for a rare gene, a genetic disorder that's mainly for women who have um, breast or ovarian cancer. But... Um, if you test positive, it doesn't mean you have cancer. It just means you carry the gene for it. So that kind of scared me, but I'm like, okay, you know, let's see what happens. And it, it was just a simple blood test. And then they said, we're also going to test you for this thing called FMF, which is familial 
Mediterranean fever because you mentioned you do have Greek ancestry in your um, in your family, which I do on my mom's side. Um, my grandfather's parents came over from Greece. And so, and then the rest of me is Ashkenazi. So I guess I'm a little bit Sephardic and Ashkenazi. Um, so familial Mediterranean fever, I'm like, okay, you know, whatever works. Um, unfortunately, those tests took two weeks to come back. So they had already um, discharged me from the hospital and my doctor cleared me for surgery. And he's like, you know, as long as you're not feeling sick, um, you know, that's fine. So I go to my doctor's office a few, you know, a week later. I said we have a diagnosis and I was really excited because I'm like, oh, finally, I get to know why I've been having all this, all these symptoms, you know, on and off for 10 years and they've never been able to figure it out. It turns out I have, I tested positive for the genetic disorder, familial Mediterranean fever. It's, um, a disease that runs in Sephardic Jews, as well as um, a lot of Middle Eastern uh, descent and uh, people of Armenian and Turkish descent. And I was really thrilled I had a diagnosis. I also got really sad really fast because it took so long, firstly, to figure it out. And secondly, I just realized, oh, it's a genetic disorder, meaning... I'm going to have to deal with this the rest of my life, meaning there's no cure for it. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what it is. I'm still learning about it through research and trial and error in terms of symptoms. Um, but what it is is basically it causes flare-ups by causing inflammation of your joints. And it, and it, um, it attacks different joints. So... One minute, your ankle could be really hurting, and the next minute, your chest is hurting. And um, that was actually a symptom that I had experienced in the hospital, which really scared me because it felt like I had boulders on my chest. And I had never had that um, sensation before or that feeling before. And I really got scared again. I'm like, is this another cancer scare? Thankfully, it wasn't. Um... And, um, you know, so I'm still trying to figure out through it. I have to see a specialist, um, at UCLA. Um, she, I guess she's the only one in, um, on the East, on the West coast, uh, who specializes in FMF and I can't see her until September, unfortunately. But in the meantime, I'm on a, a medication called Colchicine, which does help manage slash treat it. Um, and so, um, I was just told, you know, just expect flare-ups once in a while. Um, it may happen every three years and may be happening more often now that you're really stressed out. Um, so on top of that, you know, it causes a fever and just random inflammation. And, um, with this culture scene, a lot of the side effects I've been getting have also been a lot of random bruising, which it says is possible. Like I said, I'm always that 1% that suffers all those. Um, side effects. So on top of that, they also gave me Keppra, which is an anti-epilepsy pill, but it's to help with my migraines and vertigo. And as needed, if I have a vertigo spell, I'm on a scopolamine patch, which is actually a motion sickness patch, which I've never been motion sick before or seasick. Um, I love roller coasters. I love going on cruises and I've never been sick before. Um, and then on top of that, I'm on protonics, which um, coats my esophagus and stomach because um, when I was in the hospital, it was even hard for me to drink water. That's how much pain I was in. So I'm on those. And um, I may have to be at least um, on the cold scene for the rest of my life. Um, at least my migraines went away. <laughs> I'm really happy. And I haven't had very many vertigo spells since I got out of the hospital, which is great too. I've had a few flare-ups here and there, and especially today, the day before surgery. Um, I just think because I'm really stressed and I'm also really nervous and excited about my surgery. And I'm looking at the clock right now and I have to be up in four hours because I have to get to the hospital. Um, but I still really want to record this. 
Um, so it's been a really long road <laughs> getting here. As you can tell with my PCOS, I was put on medications uh, called metformin, which makes you prevents you from becoming hypoglycemic as um, or, or diabetic. And then spironolactone, which um, because women with PCOS, they um, have very many androgynous features as well as um, higher testosterone levels than the average woman would. So as a result, I get something called hirsutism, which is like whiskers or a lot of hair on your chin. And then, um, like I said, there's just higher testosterone levels. So it's constantly in limbo with the estrogen that a woman, produ a woman produces. And with the PCOS, I was always told that infertility is a possibility which makes me really sad because I really want to have my own kids and I really want to be a mom. And um, I hope that's not the case. I've been told um, if I lose weight that it's really possible to reverse my PCOS or at least get it more to a manageable state. So that's really what I'm looking forward to the most. Um, through, my, um, through my research with the FMF so far, um, I, um, I've been told that infertility also might be, um, a possibility, but what I've decided to do is take everything one step at a time. Um, this surgery means the world to me when I was feeling sick from my, um, from my, my pills, um, all the medications I was on for the PCOS, I finally last year told my doctors that, I can't keep doing this. Like, what else can be done for this? I've tried every weight loss method possible. I've been on every fad diet whatsoever. I've been on two supervised medical diets, like powder diets, 500 calories a day. I've gone to s numerous um, personal trainers. I've been on exercise regimens that athletes... Um, you know, would be on. I've done everything. I've eaten very healthy. I've eaten the Mediterranean way. I've eaten vegetarian way. I've, I've done a lot of stuff. Um, I will admit when I was younger, I was a vegetarian, um, or a pescatarian, but my parents called me a carbotarian. Um, but in high school I was about 180. And at that point I was only about, um, 40 pounds overweight. Um, and then, since high school, I've gained about 80 pounds. So that's right. I'm 260 pounds currently. And every year I've gotten older, my PCOS got worse. And they started realizing that the medications I was on weren't doing anything except making me gain weight from one of the hormones I was on. I gained about 30 pounds. And I started also developing edema in my ankles, which means a swelling of a water weight swelling of your joints. Um, so it wasn't fun at all. Um, so like I said, I'm just, I'm really excited tomorrow. I'm so nervous, excited. Like I said, that's probably why I'm still up, even though I have to be up really soon. Um, you know, I've, um, not only have I been through a lot emotionally, internally, um, in terms of other people, accepting what I've gone through. It's been very interesting to see how people accept you. Um, right now I have one of the best support systems ever. I have the greatest friends. I have, um, really supportive family and, um, um, and I have a really supportive uh, boyfriend at the moment. Um, but a lot of things I've gone through in the past, which I'd also like to share with you, have really made this journey harder. Um, I'm very private about the things I've gone through because of past experiences. And like I said, again, I want to share this with everyone to, to reach out to other people who may have gone through something similar and to know that they're not alone, and to know there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, when I would share the fact that I had PCOS with my friends or family members, man or woman, 
I would be told, well, that's an excuse. And you can lose the weight, just eat like this, just, um, just exercise like this. The other symptom with PCOS is that your metabolism is very slow. And so where it takes the average person, you know, a week to lose one to two pounds, it'll take me four weeks to lose a pound. Um, it's just very slow that way. And it's really hard. And especially with your hormones constantly, you know, unbalanced, it's really hard, um, you know, to not eat a lot for emotional reasons as well. And so that was always a problem I was faced with too. But um, I think the most hurtful part was being told that that's an excuse when my doctors don't even really know what PCOS is and then to be told by fan friends and family that it's an excuse was really hurtful because it's like you don't know what you're talking about. And um, a pet peeve of my, a huge pet peeve of mine is ignorance and intolerance. And it's like I'm showing my vulnerable side with you and I'm telling you what is going on. So you can hopefully have some compassion for me. And yet you're turning around and saying it's an excuse. And it was really hurtful too when I was going through these other symptoms three years ago as a part of a youth group um, with girls. And um, it was like a sorority type thing, but it was for girls from the ages 10 to 20. And I was a representative for the chapter I was a part of. And... I wasn't showing up to a lot of events because I was so sick and I had to travel all up and down the state of California. And I was told that, you know, um, I was asked why I wasn't going to a lot of stuff. And I said, I've been really sick. I actually just had to go to an oncologist the other day um, because um, they think I might have lymphoma. And as opposed to the girls saying, wow, um, I'm so sorry, like, I can't believe that's going on, that's happening. I was told, oh, you just want our sympathy, and you're not really living up to the expectations of your roles and your duties, and I'm the type of person that you give me a role, or you vote me into something that I will go to every length to make sure that I do that job justice, and so when I was told that I was um, that I was saying I had a cancer scare because I wanted sympathy really, really was a painful time for me. And, you know, it, it was kind of like, well, that's the last time I'm ever going to open up about that stuff unless I know for sure that this person is here to stay in my life or will have, you know, or really cares about me. I'm never going to share that information with them again. Um, and um, another little bit of background, and I know this is a really long video. Um, oh, from the age of four, I've always been into performing arts. Actually, when I was nine months old, I was in a Sears ad. <laughs> um, I was a really cute kid. Um, and my parents wanted to get me into the industry, but they didn't like how people looked at at like these adorable kids and said, oh, they don't have the right look or whatever. So then, of course, I turn around because my parents got me involved in theater camp and dance class and everything. I turn around and I want to be in performing arts. That's, that's always been my dream. Um, and so um, when I was 10 years old, I taught myself how to sing. And I still have some work to do, but I think I'm pretty good. Um, I'm a really modest person though. And I know that kind of sounds like an oxymoron because I just said, well, I think I'm pretty good. Um, but I get really shy when I'm asked to sing due to some things that I have been through. Um, and like I said, I've worked through all these issues now. I'm just sharing this with you just to, to reach out and to let you know that I've been through those things too. Um, I was told I wasn't talented enough by a few people few professors, a few choir teachers. And if I ever wanted to make it big, I would have to lose a lot of weight and really improve my voice. Um, I did start doing voice lessons around the time I got sick with my symptoms and around the time my grandmother passed away. 
And my grandmother was one of my biggest supporters of the performing arts. And I kind of lost my zest for the performing arts after that. Um, so um, I went to performing arts high school and I was in three competition choirs. And I was always given a solo kind of by default. And I said, you know, Broadway is my dream. I love being on stage. When I'm on stage, nothing else matters. Everything is just right there. And um, you kind of just feel invincible. And again, I was told, you know, if you want to make it big, you have to lose a lot of weight. And you really need to work on your voice. And I didn't date very much in high school because I feel guys really uh, judged me for my weight as well. And I have always felt I was the bridesmaid, never the bride. And I was always constantly judged for my weight, no matter if I was a few pounds overweight or a lot overweight. And um, that really took a hit at my confidence for a while. And so as a result, my parents said, you know, come up with a fallback career or fallback um, for college. And so I decided, well, I really like helping people. I've kind of always been people's therapists. And I think I've been through a lot in my young life where I could really relate to a lot of people. And so I decided I'm going to major in psychology and I really like traumas in the hospital setting. So I'm going to be a clinical social worker. And that's a whole nother story. But um, now that my surgery is happening tomorrow, um, I really miss performing and I really miss singing. And I always promised myself that I would try the Broadway thing or, or TV or whatever it comes down to. Um, and because I at least need to try. And if I don't make it, then at least I tried and I won't have any regrets. But if I never try, then I will have regrets. And so I've really been wanting to start voice lessons again as soon as I get a job and save up money towards voice lessons. And um, there's even um, one of my favorite musicals coming to town um, next year to the Thousand Oaks Civic Arts Plaza, and it's Oklahoma. And they're asking for local talent to audition for it. And so I'm going to go for it. By that time, I know I'll be lighter in terms of weight, and I'll have more confidence too. Um, and I'm not going to be judged for once by my physical appearance. Um, it's also really hurt too because a lot of people don't see the real me. They look at the outside package and then they'll get to know me. Um, and I never would do that to somebody. And plus, I would never call out their insecurities. Like what happened to me last year with some family members of mine and of, um, um, of my boyfriend's family members, they had said something about my weight and I just thought it was really insensitive. And like I said, intolerance and ignorance are two of my biggest pet peeves. And I'm a really accepting person of everybody. I don't care what your orientation is, what if you have a disability, I, I don't care. I have lots of friends who have disabilities. I have lots of friends who are from all different cultures. And, um, you know, I've been through a lot too, and so I would never judge somebody for something that they may not be able to control. And so again, I took a chance on family members trying to be vulnerable with them and share, you know, this is what I'm going through right now. And um, it's taken me a long time to finally get all my doctors together saying, yes, this weight loss surgery is for you. And to anybody who thinks that weight loss surgery is um, an easy way out is totally wrong. When I first was told the idea from my doctors, I, I thought it was the easy way out. And I'm like, no, I want to try everything um, first to see if I can lose the weight um, on my own. And I really did try, and I couldn't. Um, but no, you have to go through a lot <laughs> to get even just to get to this point. Um, you have to go, depending on what doctor and hospital you go to, you have to go through a medically supervised diet. 
Um, thankfully, I had already been through those prior to this, so I didn't have to go through them again because I've proven a million times over that I can't lose the weight on my own. But some some hospitals and programs make you do a, a supervised diet for six months before you can even be considered for surgery. Um, on top of that, you then have to go through blood tests. You also have to go through an abdominal ultrasound. Um, an EKG and stress test, which I went through, and um, um, you have to go through some support groups, which is really helpful. It's really nice to know that there are people that have been in your shoes, um, and you get to meet people who have gone through the surgery, who are getting ready to go through the surgery, and they're all different ages, and they've all been through either the lap band or the sleeve gastrectomy or the gastric bypass, and then they give you like um, recipes and and pointers on, you know, how to keep moving forward and how to get to the best you that you can. <laughs> um, but like I said, it's really hard work. And then just trying to get it authorized by your insurance is just a huge headache in itself. And then where you can get it done, I was originally going to get my surgery done at Huntington Hospital. And then my surgery sent some contract to the surgeon I'm going to and apparently I can't get it done there even though I did all my pre-op stuff there. And so now I have to go to Arcadia Methodist Hospital, which it's a great hospital too. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just I was getting comfortable with one hospital and then it got switched last minute. So, you know, and it was funny too because while I was in the hospital recently for, you know, the FMF stuff, um, I had just gotten authorized for surgery, like, um, mid, the middle of the week. So it was actually really good timing. And, you know, it's not like the surgery could have happened any sooner. So I don't feel guilty about that because it happened around the same time. On top of that, though, my dad is actually going to be going through the sleeve gastrectomy with me as well. My surgery's tomorrow or today, rather, and his is on Wednesday. So, we're going to get to be going through this huge transformation together. And my mom and sister are really supportive as well. And um, I'm just really excited to see what is going to happen. And a lot when I told my friends that I'm going through this surgery, a lot of them are like, you're not that overweight. You don't need to do this. Um... You know, I said I do for health reasons, but um, cosmetically it'll help too. And it'll really help me feel better about myself and have more confidence. And just knowing that I never have to worry about this again. I never have to be worried that I'm going to be told I ha I'm too overweight. And, you know, even when I go to my doctor for an ear infection or a cold, somehow my... Um, my weight would get tied into it. And that's another thing with the PCOS. I've had a really low immune system. Getting chronic bronchitis, the migraines, the, the um, sinus infection. Just uh, I had pneumonia last year. I mean, not that the PCOS caused this, but it, um, it causes you to have a really low immune system. So I'm just really looking forward to feeling good about myself for once. And... Um, just feeling like healthy, you know, and, um, it's going to be a long journey and, but I've really made sure of the people I've surrounded myself with that they're really supportive and everything. And, um, I do have a few fears of who will be there for me. Um, if people are still going to treat me the same way once I'm thinner, um, if I'm going to be, if I'm going to feel the same way about me, um, I know I'm not going to take anybody's crap anymore. I've already started that, that trend and I'm going to continue with that. Um, just recently I was at two family events and they said something about my weight and I'm like, you know what? I'm actually taking care of it. So I don't need to hear about it anymore. And it was simple as that, as opposed to getting really hurt over it like I have in the past, because I would never point out somebody's insecurities. Um, so I'm just really excited. Um, so in conclusion, that's my story. Um, this isn't the last from me. Um, 
my surgery is in um, a few hours and I'm really excited and I will post more videos in the future. So look forward to that. <laughs> All right, guys. So wish me luck. Good night.